There is a plague taking over the world of cybersecurity news, and as a YouTuber, it is ironic that I say this, but it is clickbait titles. This article by Cyber News says, 16 billion, with a B, passwords exposed in record-breaking data breach, opening access to Facebook, Google, Apple, and any other service imaginable. Now, when you read that title, you're like, wow, that's two passwords for every man, woman, and child on planet Earth. That had to have been some really crazy breach of some really, really like important source of data for that many passwords to come out. This is not just a leak. It's a blueprint for mass exploitation. That dash and this phrasing, by the way, smells like AI. With over 16 billion login records exposed, cyber criminals now have unprecedented access to personal credentials that can be used for account takeover, identity theft, and highly targeted phishing. What's especially concerning is the structure and recency of these data sets, Dash. These aren't just old breaches being recycled. This is fresh, weaponizable intelligence at scale. Researchers, definitely not AI said. Listen, here's the thing, guys. I get it. I know that like credential harvesters exist. If you're not sure of what I'm talking about, there are these things called info stealers. An info stealer malware is literally just a program that runs on your computer and it looks for credentials that are decrypted at rest and it sucks them up and it sends them off to a C2 server, some kind of command and control. And then the person on the other end uses that credential that was stolen to take over an account. This report here by the Australian government. I, governor, thank you. And so like, this is a real threat, right? So basically you have the, the malware author writes the malware, they, Host it on a platform somewhere. Eventually, somehow, a victim downloads InfoStealer either through social engineering, through phishing, through exploitation, through memory corruption, anything like that. And eventually, the InfoStealer runs, and then they, you know, they sell or use the credentials that they harvest. This is very simple stuff, okay? And so obviously over the course of time, you have all these different stealers and all these different platforms sealing up these different numbers of credentials that when put together adds up to the magical number of 16 billion passwords. Now, obviously, I don't like that. I don't like that that happens, but that is the nature of the world we live in. However, it is not okay to make an article that says 16 billion passwords exposed in record-breaking data breach, because again, that implies that like Google got hacked or like Apple got hacked. When I saw this, I literally thought there was like a breach of the Google Cloud platform and like my Gmail account password was hacked, okay? This style of reporting is not okay. And again, it'd be one thing if like a small little news outlet did it, but what really got the the, the water boiling was the Forbes reporting on it though. So I, I didn't see the article by Cyber News. This is maybe just a smaller group. I don't actually read them that often, but Forbes is friggin' Forbes, right? And I'm trying to show this to you guys without the ads, but the uh, the ads, persist. Anyway, I do have an ad blocker. They reposted this without really doing a ton of research, I think. They kind of just regurgitated all the other info. And again, they, they re-quoted some of the quotes that definitely smell like AI in this article. And it, it's just very annoying that this, I think, scared so many people. And the thing is, if you dive deep into this, you see very quickly that it's all bullshit. But if you're not like literate with this stuff, like most people do, they kind of just read the headline and move on. I had people asking me like, oh my God, like, so how do we recover from this? That's like the whole world. No, dude, it's it's not it's not actually a big deal. It's just someone made a clickbait title. And luckily, our friends at Bleeping Computer uh, know the 16 billion credentials leak is not a new data breach with your traditional 08 internet angry cat. Uh, news broke today about one of the largest data breaches in history, sparking wide media coverage filled with warnings and fear mongering. However, it appears to be just a compilation of previously leaked credentials stolen by info stealers, exposing data breaches, and via credential stuffing attacks. To be very clear, this is not a new data breach or a breach at all. And the websites involved were not recently compromised to steal these credentials. Instead, the stolen credentials were likely circulating for some time, if not for years. It was then collected by the cybersecurity research firm, researchers, or other threat actors, and repackaged into a database that was exposed on the internet. Again, guys, not great. Not great that this is a thing, but let's take it easy on the reporting. Now, I personally use the Apple Password Manager. It's just better for me. I have an iPhone, very easy to get to. And then also for two-factor authentication, I have an authenticator that I use through Google, kind of two separate sources. And then also, if you want to be secure, not an ad, just a, a, a plug for a piece of hardware that I like very much, the world of pass keys is becoming very popular. Yubico provides hardware pass keys 
A pass key is effectively a physical device that stores a private key that is able to be used as a password. This word pass key is a combination of password and key. Uh, that is more technically referred to as a FIDO2 authenticator that rides a web authentication protocol. And basically, it's a way of doing more secure authentication by using a physical device instead of using a like string of characters that can over time be guessed. The protocol underneath the hood in a passkey, not just Yubico, but anywhere that uses passkey technology, uses asymmetric encryption, which basically means you have a public key and a private key, and there's some kind of math done to confirm that an associated public key and private key match, and you can use those in a challenge and response protocol to do your authentication without having to depend on a single symmetric key, like your password, for example. Anyway, that's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Kind of a rant, kind of a short video. Just wanted to put it out there. Again, have basic cyber hygiene. Use a password manager for your passwords. Don't reuse passwords. Use 2FA where possible. Don't use SMS 2FA. Use a uh, authenticator app that has authentication codes like either Microsoft 2FA or Google Authenticator. And, uh, and also hit subscribe. That's also a great way to stay safe on the internet. If you're new here, hit subscribe. And if you're not, how we doing? Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, go check out this video that I think you will also enjoy because my videos are great. Okay, goodbye.